Hey, hey friends, this is Tyler here, owner and artist of Rehab to Fab Designs and content creator for Dixie Bell Paint Company. I'm gonna show you how to go from this old, outdated, antique tiger oak dresser to a more modern look using Dixie Bell products, silk paint and anchor, and the new Bells and Whistles line of decoupage rice paper. And we're gonna get started. Apply anchor with your one inch synthetic flat brush to the frame of this piece. You'll notice I'm not applying it to the inset on the sides of this piece because I have another plan for that. So I applied it all over the frame and I ended up coming back and doing the inside as well so that in case the drawers slide in all the way, it will not show wood but instead black paint. Next, I'm going to take the new silk line of paint in a color called Endless Shore to paint the side panels. This color is a really pretty white option. It's not really a cream, so it's not a yellow based color, but it's also not like a pure bright white, and it's a perfect complement to this black. I'm actually going to end up covering it up. However, when I paired these two colors together, they really looked well together, and I kind of wanted to leave it that way. I repaired the broken and missing veneer off the top of this dresser using Pro Finishers wood filler and a putty knife. I simply applied it to the areas that were broken a little thicker than the actual height of the piece that was missing. And then I came back through with my sanding block and my sandpaper and smoothed it out and sanded it down. If you want more information on how to do these repairs, I'm pretty sure some of my other videos on my YouTube channel have video of the actual repairs themselves. You can also find information about how to do repairs in our blog on our website, rehabtofabdesigns.com. You can also post any questions that you have in the comment section. You'll notice here that after sanding, I take my hand and rub my finger across the area where the wood putty is. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm checking to see not only is it getting smooth, but also is the area where I applied the putty raised. Here you'll see I started peeling off some more veneer. I missed it on my initial pass of doing my repairs and I had to come back and break this off because it was loose and then come back and refill it again. So because this piece of broken veneer is on the back edge of the top of this dresser um, or anywhere really on the tops where it meets the edge, I'm going to use tape to kind of build a wall, so to speak, on either side of the corner here. And I'm going to use that to hold my putty in place, my wood filler, when I apply it so it doesn't just run off the back because we are building it up and creating height to fill in the part that's missing. And if you just put it up thick, it's gonna kind of run off the bag. So I use tape to put on either side of it to hold it in place. You're using wood finishers, putty, wood filler, and a putty knife. Using your putty knife, pick up a small to moderate amount of your wood filler, depending on the size of the area you're filling. Use it just like you would a spatula to smear the wood filler into the open area that you need to repair. This is what it looks like close up. You're also going to use your putty knife to drag it across the wood filler to smooth it out. Pretend you're dressing or icing a cake and you want it to be nice and smooth, but you also want it to be just slightly higher than the original wood finish. That way you can sand it down to smooth and make sure that it's filled in with no gaps. Keep in mind, the more product that you add in excess, meaning more than you actually need, the more you have to sand off when it's done. So don't apply so much that it's going to take you too long to sand it back down. I.e. don't create more work for yourself. You'll need to allow this putty to dry completely before sanding it off. This piece in particular I allowed to dry overnight before coming back and working on it again.
Milky Grit sandpaper here on this one corner because I had to build it up so high so it's pretty thick. So this is what the top of my dresser is looking like after this has dried. This is where I filled in with the putty the other day and used the uh, tape to kind of create and build the wall around it to hold my putty. So we'll take that off. And start sanding that down. And we'll be ready for paint. I'm gonna start with 150 grit sandpaper to knock down my high spots and then I'll come in with a 220 to smooth it out. Here's what it looks like all sanded down, nice and smooth. You wanna take your finger across it and run. Make sure you don't feel any ridges. If it feels raised, that means you need to sand it again. That's all the veneer that was broken. So now, we're gonna put our coat of Dixie Belle Silk on one paint and anchor. That's my black, match the rest of the piece. And we'll start our decoupage. Apply a total of two coats on the top of your piece as well. Okay, time for the fun part. We are using Dixie Bell's new Bells and Whistles line, and this is their decoupage rice paper, and it's in a pattern called Palette Wood Pattern. As you can see, it's made to look like old distressed barn wood that has a stenciled pattern on it, as well as some flowers. Hello, hello, this is Tyler here, owner and artist of Rehab to Fab Designs and content creator for Dixie Bell Paint Company. Today, I am going to be using some of the new Dixie Bell Rice tissue paper that is coming to you soon, I believe in April. Um, it's part of the Bells and Whistles um, package that they're rolling out that includes um, some stencils, some silk screen stencils, transfers, and also now the rice tissue paper. Um, so I'm going to be putting this on um, a piece here today that you see beside me. It is an old tiger oak um, antique dresser that I have stripped the drawer fronts and also bleached them because I wanted to get them really light. I'm still um, trying to decide if I'm going to leave them like that or paint them afterwards. Um, so I'm going to put my paper on and decide. I painted this in the new Dixie Belle silk all-in-one mineral paint in a color called Anchor. It's, um, they're black in that line. And if you haven't used this and you're um, 
interested, you should definitely try it if you like black. Um, I love this paint. It goes on smooth. It dries really flat. The top right now you see is shiny because it's still wet because I just applied the top after um, doing some repairs up there. But it dries really matte. Um, it's got a low sheen to it. Um, and it has a built-in primer and a built-in top coat. And I just really love the look of it. Um, it's very common with um, chalk paints when you, in black, when you touch them, they leave prints and smudges and like um, oils from your skin and you can see marks on it and that just does not happen with this paint. Um, and I just really, really love the finish. Um, so definitely worth looking into if you like black as one of your colors for your furniture refinishing. Um, you can check it out. You can order with our affiliate link. We would appreciate that. So the whole piece is painted in that, minus the drawers, which again, I stripped down and put some bleach on. This right here is painted in the silk line as well. Um, and one of the white colors, I can't, I don't have it here. I think it was oyster that I used. Um, but I, the reason I put the white on is because I'm putting the tissue paper on here. And so if you put it on a darker background, the darker paint will show behind it. And so it can kind of darken your whole image. And this has like a pretty, light color here as part of it and so i just wanted it to be on a lighter background that way that image didn't get too dark um so that's why i have white here and it's not a perfect paint job by any means because i was just trying to get some light on it and then i taped around it so i can paint my black around the corners and this is actually just um one coat right here um that i just kind of threw on really sloppily and it's got really great coverage and then like i say this is an old piece it's a um old antique um tiger oak dresser or chest smaller piece um, but probably 100 years old 150 years old minimum and this is the um, silk line of paint that I applied and as you can see this has been on for I think like three or four days now and there's no tannins showing through so there's no bleed through on it so that is pretty amazing um, for a piece this old um, but that said I'm gonna go ahead and take this tape off and we'll get started I'm going to be applying my decoupage paper using Dixie Bell's clear coat as my medium to adhere it and then I've just got a plain old regular brush um, the only one I had dry at the moment that I'm going to be applying my paper with we're going to be using Dixie Bell's top coat called clear coat as our adhesion material we're going to paint this on you can use any brush for this we're going to paint it on where our decoupage paper is going to go and then that is going to help our paper stick to our furniture so I'm going to start by applying my clear coat first here on um, the piece and you don't, I'm not going to apply it everywhere because I don't um, want it to stick everywhere yet and the reason being the tissue paper is actually larger than this panel that I'm applying it on but I want to put a little bit on here just to kind of help my paper stick and then we'll go over top of it as well. And hopefully I can get this straight on the first pass. I also, it would be easy to just line it up and put the straight edge of this paper right here with the straight inset here. But there is like a little trim, a white edge trim around the piece and I don't want that to show. So I am going to try to line it up above it a small amount and hope that again it's straight. And then I'm gonna Use that clear coat medium there I just applied that way it sticks and then I will kind of work my way around it so with tissue paper you want to um, smooth it out to make sure you don't have any air bubbles under it and um, this paper is a little thicker than some of the tissue papers I've worked with in the past. Um, but you should be able to work your bubbles out. Just be gentle. You don't want to be too rough when you're working with tissue paper because it can kind of roll up um, and tear your paper. Now, if you were doing this on a drawer front, you could just slap it on, let the overhang um, the overlap hang over your drawer and then take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of rub it across the edge and it would just automatically get rid of your excess tissue paper. But this part that I'm choosing to use it on is an inset that sits deeper than the frame. So I kind of have to get it the right size and then um, cut it and hopefully um, cut it straight and not tear it, which is going to be the, um, the challenge for this one. 
So I want to put um, my clear coat on this inset panel, obviously, but also trying to avoid um, getting it all over the rest of it because then if my paper lays on it, it's going to stick. So I'm just gonna kinda use my brush to just push it right up in the corners. So same thing over here, just going to kind of gently fold my paper back, apply this clear coat on the edges, and just kind of use my hand to smooth it, and then I'm going to come back with a squeegee, you can also use a little tongue depressor or popsicle stick. Um, or an old credit card and kind of smooth it out. And then once I get it on, I will come and paint over the top of it with my clear coat. And that'll be that. Okay, so I have this on now, um, and I had to get my squeegee, so I order these. Um, you can order them off of Amazon, or you can get them at a Harbor Freight if you have a Harbor Freight near you. I call it a squeegee. Um, it's like the shape of a credit card. It's got a plastic edge on it. It's got a little gripper on it, and then it has a smooth edge that has a little bit of fabric on it, um, and it works for just this to kind of rub on and get rid of bubbles. So if you're working with like vinyl, it works really well to um, get the air pockets out of your vinyl. And so it works great for tissue paper as well. Again, just um, being careful with it so you don't tear your paper. And then I'm gonna use um, a box cutter to um, kind of come across the edges and cut my piece, my tissue paper, sorry. Once you're finished trimming the excess decoupage paper off your piece, you're going to paint back over it um, with your adhesive medium. In this case, again, we are using the Dixie Belle Clear Coat. You can also use Mod Podge if you like, but I do find that it's a little bit sticky and I don't like to work with it as well. Here, we are getting ready for side two. Apply your clear coat. Apply your tissue paper over top of your clear coat. Cut off excess tissue paper from around the edges. Use an old credit card or squeegee to press down your paper and ensure you don't have any air bubbles under it. And then once you're done with that, we're going to paint over the top of the paper using your clear coat again to seal it in. Easy peasy. As always, thanks for watching our YouTube videos. Be sure and subscribe to our channel and if you'll hit that bell it will get you signed up for notifications so you're notified when we post new videos thanks again